Welcome back to a new studio vlog. This vlog is going to be kind of bits and pieces of a bunch of stuff together. I really wasn't able to film very much and I'll talk a little bit about that later on in the video. But I just wanted to start off the vlog here with a little mini haul from Miss You Pacey or Ashley. I'm not sure how to say her last name, but I'll show her information here in the clip soon. She's one of my favorite artists that I follow on Instagram, and I bought this print, which I remember when she made this. I'm so excited to have it. And I also bought this set of Moth Girl stickers. And I also received her art book in the mail. I was a part of the Kickstarter, so I got a little sticker with it just because of the tier that I chose to donate in. And I'm so in love with this. I love having it. I love looking through it. I'm obviously not going to show the whole thing just out of respect for the artist. But I'll do a little quick flip through here and show you a couple of my favorite ones. Here's a couple of the little goodies it came with, uh, as well as her business card and her information. If you guys want to check her out, I highly recommend it. She always does really cool stuff. And I got this free sticker with it. Next up here, I'm going to be showing you mainly what I've been working on. I've been touching up a lot of pieces for a couple of products. So here is just a really quick time lapse about basically what I'm doing to all of my images that I am editing currently. As you can see, I'm just whitening the whites and I go ahead and go through and fix a couple of other things. And here's a more in real life kind of process of how that goes. So basically I'm just taking the piece and I go over the entire background and I make it a pure white. So here I'm using the selection tool and I select the background and I make it pure white. This just ensures that there are not any discolorations in the backgrounds of the images when I do end up printing them, especially because I plan on printing them in booklets. I don't want the edge of the picture to be very noticeable against the border of the page of the book. So I'm just going in and I make the background appear white and I make a couple of areas, usually the eyes and the reflection in the eyes. I make a pure white just so they stand out a little bit better. And then I'll just go through and I will fix up any small errors that I don't want in the final image just like random little things and I'm usually I take the technical pencil brush and I just go through because I think it looks really natural it leaves a very textured finish so that it looks like that I didn't even edit it in the first place which I like I don't want it to look like I really did much to work on these I'm only doing very minor things to fix them I still want them to be quite true to how I made them but just be a little bit more polished for show purposes. This entire process is really not very complicated. It's just extremely time consuming, especially because I chose to do it to two different sets of artworks 
for Inktober, so I'm doing this to 62 images, not including whatever images I end up working on for the covers and insides of the zines. It takes a very long time, but it is totally worth it to create a quality product for you guys. wanted to interject somewhere in the vlog because I know I haven't included very much footage in this one where I'm talking to you guys so I just kind of wanted to get a little bit of that in there hopefully you guys aren't missing my chatty mouth too much from the last vlog this month has kind of been a tough one just got a lot going on I feel like everybody's kind of feeling down one way or another these days so this month has definitely proven to be one of the tougher ones for me so far but I have still been working in the background even though I don't have a lot of footage for this vlog I have been working on a lot of stuff a lot of the work I've been doing is background work so stuff on my iPad and just stuff that I feel like is not super exciting so I haven't really been recording very much of it. The main project that I've been working on is my Inktober zines which I want to make to sell at the art festival this summer which so far the virus has not affected the date of that so as of right now everything is still good to go. I haven't heard any updates on it yet so I'm just going to assume at this point that everything is still happening and I would rather be prepared instead of not prepared. I'm just going to continue working on stuff and even in the worst case scenario that it does not happen or it gets delayed, I will still have a bunch of stuff to eventually put on an Etsy store hopefully. So I've just been really busy working on that. It's just a lot of cleaning up images, scanning images and making sure that they're presentable in a way that I feel happy with for the product that they're going to be turned into, whether it be prints, zines, stickers, what have you. So that's a lot of what I've been doing lately. It's not exciting work, but it's definitely something that needs to be done. I'm at the point now where I think I can start doing test prints of my 2017 zine. And as you saw before, I showed you kind of a little bit of the process of how I was working on all of the images, how I was cleaning them up, what I was doing to them. I also showed you guys a little short time lapse of the cover design of the Inktober 2017 zine. So I'm really excited to actually make these into physical products. I feel like the editing process for these images is super tedious and not my favorite thing but it's definitely worth it to create a beautiful end product for you guys so i want to take you guys along to see how the test prints come out and um i also have to refill my ink for my printer so for the first time i'm going to try the precision inks refill system i don't want to blabber on too long so let's start refilling some inks 
All right, time to refill some inks. I'm not gonna be super talkative through this entire process. There's just a couple of things I will interject to kind of explain what's going on. This took quite a long time for me to do. I started off just by making sure I was protecting my surface. You will need an X-Acto knife besides all of the tools that the kit comes with. I know I have a cutting mat on my desk, but I like to keep it really clean. I like it to look clean, so I just prefer to have something protective over top of that. Here I'm using the little chip reset thingy, and I don't know if you could tell, but when the chip is fully reset, it will light up in a solid red color. So you'll see me mess with this first cartridge quite a lot. I think it was just like an experiment the entire time to basically figure out if I was doing it the right way or not. Um, it was quite the process for sure and my fingers were definitely stained and sore but it's definitely worth it to save all of the money and the second time I need to refill these cartridges it's not going to be nearly as difficult because I won't need to pull the ball out of them for a second time. I just need to unplug the little plug so it'll just be as easy as unplugging it and filling it back up and putting the plug back in. So this is really the worst process here. I spent so long trying to get this ball out in this first cartridge. You will see me struggle quite a bit. <laughs> and I found it the easiest to kind of screw it in. You can see I got a little excited there because I finally got it. Um, I found it easiest to screw it in just by rotating the base on the surface that I had it on and then pushing down on the little screw instead of twisting the screw into the ball. It worked better that way for me. In order to kind of know what kind of steps and what precautions to take to make as less of a mess as possible. I did end up watching Art a la carte's or Valerie's video on the first time she ended up using this refill system for her inks and I watched her video. I got a really good sense of how to do all this stuff and then I, I really did not think that you would need a drill to drill these holes. And she even said in the video, I know you think you're not going to need it, but you need it. And I didn't believe her, so that's totally my bad. But you'll see later on in the video my utter disappointment in realizing that I do in fact need the drill. So here, you see me struggling to put the plug in. And I realized that it's just not gonna go in. I tried banging it in and everything, nothing. I realized I needed to get that blast of drill. One eternity later. Now that I am back with the drill, I used this size nib. I'll put it here on the screen. The drill bits that I was using were in metric unit so my husband has like a really big collection of tools and he just has a lot of different ones and these are just the drill bits that I found because he was not home at the time so um, I did have to look up online the conversion to the measurement that Valerie recommended in her video and I ended up using the conversion that you saw so there we go I finally did the first one and then you'll see me go a little bit faster here through the second one, and then we will slowly get these filled up. I definitely had a much easier time taking the ball out of all of the other cartridges. I don't know why the black one was the hardest one and just happened to be the first one. There was not nearly as much resistance. It all worked out in the end though. If you are somebody that wants to try this method for your printer, I will link Art a la carte's video in the description below. It is a really helpful video and I think her videos are always really funny and silly. Very enjoyable to watch. She goes in much more detail than I do about how this process goes and why we are doing the things that we are doing. I 
do want to kind of explain what I'm doing here just because it looks really weird. Um, when I drilled the hole, there was always this like plastic piece that fell on the inside of each cartridge and it was just one piece and it always just got stuck down there so I had to fish it out for each cartridge. But it wasn't a big deal. And there we go, that is the very last one and all of our cartridges are nice and full. As you can see, my fingers got pretty stained, so if that is something that bothers you, I would recommend wearing gloves. Now that these are all nice and full, we can start doing some test prints. I'm just showing you the mock-up that I made just to figure out how I was going to print each page. As you know, every signature in a book is laid out in a very confusing way if you have ever made a book before. I have not, so this was definitely something I knew I was going to have to do just because I'm not comfortable doing it with my brain power, I guess. <laughs> um, so I just did this so that I had each individual page and I was doing double-sided pages so it just made it really easy for me to figure out what picture to print next to what other picture and what order to print them in and everything like that. It helped a lot. I did not print them out of order at all in this process. So first off, you can see all of the designs I have laid out on my computer and I'm just using regular plain printer paper to print off one image, just one page, I really wanted to ensure that I liked the size that everything was going to print at before I printed everything on my nice paper. And I also wanted to check for just anything that I thought looked weird after actually printing. Stuff can look completely different on paper than it does on the screen. So I just wanted to do a check and I knew it wasn't going to be 100% accurate to how it would look on the nice paper, but I mainly was just looking for the size. I didn't really care if the colors were slightly off or slightly different than they looked, but they actually ended up looking pretty dang good. So I liked the size of that and how that looked. This is the paper that I am going to be using. I did talk about this a little bit more in my last studio vlog, if you haven't seen that. And here is the what I'm calling the prototype on my nice paper. I don't have a nice paper cutter so the edges are very frayed and uneven, but I will end up getting a nicer paper cutter so that the edges will be nice and crisp and straight. Mainly I just wanted to ensure the quality of the paper, the quality of the images, the layout of everything. And I'm going to be going through this and making a lot of notes. As you can see on the tops of the images, there is no white border like there is all the way around. And I really want to fix that because I want the border around all the images. And I'm just going to make a couple adjustments, but overall I really like it.
hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse that I did of my digital Gamora fan art that I did for the Six Fan Arts Challenge. I hope you really enjoyed the vlog as well, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are staying healthy and staying safe through these crazy times. As usual, everything that I mentioned will be listed in the description box below, as well as all my social media links, and feel free to post any questions that you may have in the comments. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye!